No techniques with Adam. It's time to play the signature. Here we go. All right. Uh, so in this slide, we're going to discuss uh, piano technique, uh, focusing on the relaxation. Because I've had uh, got many students uh, and members who join my group, and they uh, say that they have problems sometimes with pains and uh, other things which bother them. So the thing is, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some basic uh, relaxation techniques uh, which have helped me. Because when I started in uh, Berklee College of Music in Boston uh, a while ago. <laughs> I got into problems because I was uh, I was played without any warm up uh, techniques, and I also played too much the same thing over and over. And it all culminated when I was going to do like a grade test or what I want to call it. It's like that different yeah proficiency levels they called it. And uh, we had to play uh, diminished scales, so I would play them uh, over and over for. Uh, I think three days in a row, nothing else. And uh, at the end of that regime, I, I had pains in my arms and all over the place. And uh, <clears throat> I had to contact a, an Alexander Technique teacher. And she helped me over time, you know, get my body back in place. So it's uh, important how you practice. So without any further ado, I'm going to go over to the piano. And I'm going to see how we can practice to save our bodies and practice in a good way. First I'm going to show you uh, myself in profile so you can see how I sit. So it's important when you sit that you have a relaxed position. You can see here that I don't sit with a support like this because uh, then it's easy that I start slumping that the shoulders and everything goes like this. So we don't want this. So, uh, I use this chair because I can raise it and lower it, that's good, if you have a piano chair which uh, allows that. So I can go up a bit if I want to, I can also go down. But I don't use the support because then I start playing like this and then I get neck, neck pains and back pains. So when you play piano it's like dancing, you want to be flexible so you can move around. Great. So now uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to see the position of the hands. Now you see that the angle is kind of on the negative, it's going down. So it can be better if you can raise the angle a bit. So if I raise the chair, yeah, so it's more like kind of 90-ish, 90 degrees. Because then I have, the, I have weight into the keys. Uh, but I don't have to play like this, because then it's a risk that I end up playing like this. And that's not good. So you have to f feel like it, and that's why it's good to have a piano chair, which allows for this, so you can go up and down. Don't sit on a fixed chair. That is not recommended. Okay? And then, uh, if you look at my back, from behind, um, I usually do Alexander technique, so I think that my head goes up and forwards, my back widens and lengthens in all directions, to the side and across the back, so it goes up and down and across, and also like a star, diagonally, like this. Uh, because that allows an opening of the back to happen, so I have this opening happen instead of a closure. We don't want this to happen, that gives tension. Instead we want this opening to happen. And then I can feel that this lengthening goes out into the arms and that I feel relaxed. Um, I would recommend you to watch uh, Rubinstein videos where he plays the piano, the classical pianist. He has a very open back. And there is a story once that he actually uh, busted a, a jacket because he was widening his shoulders so much that it cracked. So that's kind of an ideal scenario. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to strive to crack your jackets, but it's, it's kind of a fun anecdote because he had really a big opening of the chest. 
So if you have many tensions in the body, you can uh, you know, seek out an Alexander Technique pra practitioner. They helped me a lot with the, with the body. When I studied at Dalton College of Arts in Totnes Devon, England, um, then uh, they helped me. I had Alexander Technique, I think it was three or four times a week, and it was free, it was part of the tuition. It was a fantastic bonus. They worked on me like for an hour every day, and there were several people working on me because I had practitioners, trainers, and students, and they all worked with me. So it's like transformed my life. I definitely recommend the Alexander Technique if you have problems with the, the back and tensions in the body. Okay, uh, so now we're going to look at approaching the piano. We spoke about the sitting position. So we want to be like have a 90 degrees and you can uh, uh, check it out what's comfortable for you. What you don't want to have is coming too much up because then what happens is you will start kind of leaning into the piano to play because the distance is too far away so you start crunching like this. Now I'm exaggerating but even micro movements like this uh, is not beneficial for the body. So this is too high so I go down a bit like this and I sit more yeah I like to come down a bit underneath because I have a really tall back and then I allow it to, to lengthen and widen. So I usually try it out and see where I find myself in a comfortable position. Yeah, so I'm going to do it here. And uh, then we're going to do some uh, exercises I was taught uh, when I lived in Boston when I started with my classical teacher. Um, I call this uh, the elephant. So you pretend that your uh, arm is a heavy snabel of the elephant. And we're going to approach the piano. So what we do is we do a swing movement like this because we're going to work with gravitation. So uh, we're going to allow the hand to swing like limb next to the body, heavy, and then coming up and then we're going to land with the middle finger and it's going to be like this. And you want to hear that the piano is sounding, so you don't go like, and then stop it and like this. You don't have to be nice, you just allow it to swing, and then allow the gravity to play the note. So we go like this. Yeah. And then we can take another one, can be any note, and then just allow it to fall like this. And when you come down, you don't stop it like this, because then you're going to have tension. You allow it to move like this. So you have this movement happening. Mm -hmm. And then you can do the right hand, the same thing. So the right hand, you swing it. And you come up. Like this. And you can take another note. So you sit at the edge of the chair and you just do the swing. One, two, hallelujah. Like that. Come down. And then you get this kind of rebound and the hand comes into position. You can do it again. Two, three. Like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not hitting like this and it's not like hindering and then like that. It's just allowing the weight, the gravity, to do its job. Coming down. Because then you're developing uh, the technique you want for, for playing. Because you start here with the body weight on the shoulders and it goes down into the arm like this. And you want to work with the arm weight because then you can control the tone of the note. Great. And then uh, we can do, you can approach the piano closer. I call this uh, Newton's apple. It's like he was sitting there and all of a sudden an apple fell down. And what you do is, here we had the swing to prepare us, but here it's getting more closer to a common situation of playing where you're closer to the keyboard. So you hold the hand, you're relaxed, you don't hold anything, and then you go one, two, three. And you just allow it to fall 
One, two, three. And what's important when you come down is you don't go like this. So you have a straight finger. You don't want to land like this. You want to have a bent finger like this. That's the way you come down. Because then you have a natural uh, uh, ref uh, reflection or whatever you call it. When you drive a car, you have this bouncy effect. And that happens when you have the hand in this position when it's bent because then it can bounce. If the fingers are straight, there's no bounce and you break your bones. So when you come down, you want to come down with a bent finger like this. The bent finger like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to do that a few times. Now you can do it with the left hand too, relaxed. Come down with a bent middle finger. Again. Like that. And you can check with your back, how does it feel? Is it free? Come back to the sensations I did first. My neck is free, my back lengthens and widens in all directions. And maybe I want to lower the piano chair a bit so I, my back always can lengthen and be upright so it doesn't cringe and bend over. That's why I uh, usually tend to have the piano a bit higher than usual. So I, I allow my back to be lengthened. Because if it's too low, I will cringe over. And that's especially for me because I have a long back. So you have to adapt the position for you so it feels good for your situation. Bra. So now we've done Newton's apple. Now we're going to do the rainbow, which is an extension of the snable. But we just do a, a circle like this. So over the keyboard. So we're going to go like with a weight, like this. And you just do a rainbow. And then you can allow your arm to lengthen and widen. So you can feel like rubber man that you go further and further as you stretch over the keyboard. Maybe you can do the entire keyboard and get a nice stretch happening. And then you do that with the left hand arm, like this. So that's a good one. You, so you extend the arm, you get the extension happening, and you still work with the gravity. So you come down, and you're heavy, and you get a big sound, like a giant. And also when I come down, I have the reflection here, the bounce, bounciness. Good. Now uh, I'm going to teach you a, a, an exercise which my Alexander teacher taught me in Boston when I had this big... Uh, problem after playing all the diminished chords. So uh, what we do is we sit a bit towards the other end of the keyboard. We look there and then we're going to repeat. My neck lengthens, my neck goes up and forwards. It's like a, if I was a marionette, uh, you know, having a thread here on the top, allowing my head to go forwards and up, that kind of feeling. So yeah. So I allow my head to go forwards and up, my back to lengthen and widen apart, my arms to lengthen and widen apart from each other. And then I approach the keyboard here and just play chromatically down, like a scale. And the focus here is like I allow my arm to lengthen and widen here all the time. It lengthens and widens. So it goes down this way, it also goes up. So from the shoulder, uh, the elbow, it's like a lengthening this way and a lengthening that way. And also the shoulders widen apart. So I get an expansion happening. And then I go down gradually and allow the arm to lengthen away from the keyboard. So I have this lengthening happening here alongside. So I stretch out but I also stretch the other way. And this way I create a great stretch of the arm. And then you can, you don't follow like this, you hang over, you just sit here and do the play as long as far as the arm allows. And this way you get a good stretching happening. Mm -hmm. So, and then we'll go 
down here and repeat the same action uh, with the left hand. So, uh, yeah, this way. So we feel that there's a stretching back from the keys while physically we go up and stretch up the keyboard. So there's a pull here and we go up. And this way the arm stretches and opens up. Yeah. Um, okay, and then we take the right arm and do the same thing. We stretch it away. You can go blacks as well. It's not really important what you play, it's more like going up a ladder thing. Yeah, and we do that same thing up here uh, with the left. So I, my arm lengthens and widens, lengthens. And still I'm holding here and I'm lengthening. So that's a really good stretch exercise and it stretches and opens up here everything and the arm lengthens and widens so you open up. Now we're going to look a bit more on the fingers how you can stretch them. So uh, my piano teacher in Boston she showed me this exercise. You stretch the fingers. You go sideways. You don't open up like this because then you're going to stretch and hurt your fingers like uh, Robert Schumann did. So we're not out for this. We do the stretch like this, a long way, as if you were a dancer going into a sp spagat kind of thing. Yeah. So you stretch, you play C, and then you go up, play major seven or how far you can reach. Then you go the other way around. Maybe you play just a sixth. Doesn't matter really. If you have shorter fingers, you might just get an F or an E. So, and then you take the next middle finger, ring finger. And then you stretch, and here you go this way too, and then back, the ring and the little finger. And then the thumb and, and the long finger you can stretch this way, not too much, it's nothing about exaggerations, it's just smoothly, so you open up. Then you do the same thing with the left hand. So now we've done a basic, uh, basic stretch. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at uh, how we can use the weight and work with the wrists of the hands. Okay. So I advocate coming up like this. You do a swing and then you come down and you play all five fingers. Every finger has its own key and you just go up and down like this. You're not letting it to come up, but you have the weight of the arm, so all of the fingers are being played like this. And then the left hand, the same thing. You hold them together and you have the hand curved. And it's, you can see here that I allow it to, like a hinge, it's flexible. I'm not stiff, so I go like this. But it's a hinge movement around the wrist. And this is very important when you play piano because it's going to relax you when you play instead of building tension. All right? So that's good exercise. And then we're going to do a, start playing kind of a miniature scale. So you can begin on C and you go C, down and up, D, up. See if you can play legato so you tie them. And as long as I have the pressure down, the key is sounding, then G, down, like this. And 
when I play this finger, I'm never playing totally flat. There's always a small curvature. So I, I have something to grip on. It's like a cat gripping on a table so not to fall off. Because if you're flat, you have no control. It's nothing. So I never go totally flat. I'm approaching going downwards, but I still have a curvature so I can control the fingers. Now we do this with the left hand. We can begin with the thumb on G. G down and up. F down and up. E down and up. E. And then you go up D. F. G. Yeah. So that's a good way to start uh, playing scales. And then the next motion we're going to look at is this circular motion. So you put your little finger on the G and you just circulate like this. So you go out, and up and down. It's like swimming. This is the motion we want to have when we play piano, to be totally free. We don't want to have any tensions, anything stopping us. Same thing here, play the C, going up and down like this. Like that, good. And now what we're going to do is going to play a small scale rotation. So you see what's happening is I do this rotation as I play. It's the same we did before when we had one here. It's this up and down, but since we're going laterally, we have to play this, draw this circle as we play. So the exercise again is going to be it's like you draw a circle in there. And you can try it a bit fast, just see how relaxed you are. So you see my arm is painting here. I still have weight on all the keys, so I come down. You do the same thing with the right hand. You go down, go up, down, down, away, up. So here's a hinge. Hinge. Here I rotate, <coughs> and then come back. yourself. Yeah, so that's a good uh, uh, exercise. Uh, an extension of that is called uh, the toothbrush. It's from the Hamburg uh, Conservatory. It's a famous exercise. With this exercise we're going to work with uh, what we did before with the hinge movement now and we're also going to work uh, finger independence and we're also going to work uh, a scheme where we do uh, transposing playing through all the 12 keys. So this is the way it looks like. In the right hand, you play uh, harmonically. What we're going to play is going to play C major, C minor, A flat, and then going to D flat, and then D flat minor, and then A major, going to D. So the formula is with the toothbrush is playing the tonic one and then going to the contra tonica parallel a flat major and this becomes the five chord of the next key d flat so again it's like i play the tonic c major and then i'd play the tonic contra parallel a flat major 
then this goes to D flat major. So this becomes a new tonic. So the contra parallel A flat major is a pivot chord. It's flat six or the contra parallel in C major, but it's also the five chord in D flat. And this is the way we can modulate smoothly. So the chords, the tones I'm going to play in right hand are C, G, C, D, E. So it's basically a C chord with a passing tone D. And the, what's important now is we're going to do a bigger circulation than we did in the first exercise. The first one was a small, here we're going to have a bigger. So you can start with the E and just kind of feel how it is rotating. Have a nice rotation going, feel the freedom like this. Yes. And then you're going to go from E to E. Mm -hmm. So you go and you have the smooth movement going like this. Keys I play is like in the uh, it's a G triad. It's the third, five, one, two, three. So I go, and here I do a small rotation, and then I go to C minor. I'm going to just play while I'm actually playing the notes. I'm playing first C and then C minor and then I go and play A flat and then to D flat major. Hmm? This is you see graphically. So again I'll play C, rotate and then I go to C minor And then I go to A flat major, and then to D flat major. So the way I see these chords is it's like a C chord with the E and the bass, and then C minor, and then you have A flat major with the E flat in the bass. flat with F in the bass. Okay, and the left hand it plays a mirror image of this. So we begin on C and again we rotate. So you can start practicing just rotating here. together we get the mirror image happening so it plays C 
and then we play C minor and then A flat major and then we go to D flat major so we want to play this together now I'm going to do it slowly C six of the D scale, this tone, which is the contra, counter parallel. In D flat major, the counter parallel is A major. So that's the one I stay for. C, sorry, D flat, D flat minor, A major, and then I go to the new tonic, which is D. Mm. Okay, <coughs> now I'm going to play through the keys. <clears throat> and I'm going to say which keys I'm playing as I go through, so you can see the way it works. So I'm going through D, D minor, B flat, E flat, E flat minor, B, E, E minor, separately so you get this really leggero, uh, leger, which means smooth, uh, like a f waterfall happening, like but I always have the rotation going here and so forth. Also in the left hand it might need more practice so not so fast. exercise to open up here and to have this rotation happening so you're free in the arms and it's good for going through the keys you work like a spider through the entire keyboard so it's a great exercise right. so uh, what I want to do is uh, thanks for today for uh, showing up here and checking out the technique uh, live here so these exercises I would recommend you to do them like uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes every day to warm up and then you won't have uh, problems and what's also important is when you practice don't practice more than uh, maybe 20 or 30 minutes at a time then go up and take a you know stretch uh, rotate your shoulders like this you can stretch out the arms and rotate them uh, do some stretching like this maybe bend over your back come up like this so you go out of, of a, a freeze state so you don't freeze because if you sit for like one hour that's too much and especially if you start sitting like two hours or something like that at a stretch 
you will end up having problems because the body is not made to sit still all the time. The same thing when you're working at the office or something, you need to get up now and then do stretchings and stuff to release tension in the body and, and uh, you know, to allow it to give blood toward the parts of the body. Alright, so if you have any questions you can write me up at Modern Piano Styles with Adam. Check out my YouTube channel as well with the same name, Modern Piano Styles with Adam. And subscribe. Alright, we're gonna play the signature. Cheers. Thank you.